In the times that we live in right now, the looming economic and major issues are huge that we are facing coming August 1st. Now we all know there's a lot of stuff that's going on in this world, but let's talk about something that is reality for once. Let's really sit here and have a discussion on what could be happening come August 1st. August 1st is a deadline for the UPS, Teamsters, negotiations, and possible strike. What are the implications of this whole scenario playing out? Right now, neither side is talking to one another. Negotiations have come to a halt. What does this mean for you and me? This means for a lot of people, this could be a very, very bad situation for people in especially rural areas that don't have access or ways to get to their local stores, to get their medicines, to get their food and everything else and rely on these delivery companies to deliver to them. FedEx has announced that there is no way possible that it can even absorb a eighth of the percentage of packages that have been moved by UPS on a daily basis. They are trying to succeed in trying to take over uh, certain different accounts and try to ensure that those things do get delivered, but they are very limited in what they can do. The same with the post office. They're already overwhelmed with the amount of packages and things that they have. They do not have the workforce either. So what does that leave to have things moved? Things will come to a grinding halt. Washington DC and top executives in DC have stated that they will not be interfering or joining in on the in negotiations that are taking place at this point in time. Where does that leave us? Here's something that I would highly suggest people really think about in the next couple of weeks as we approach the August 1st looming problem. You really need to sit back and see what you have to have that you order the most of and maybe in the next week or so try and order extra to get you through two to three weeks. We don't know how long this strike may last. In 1997, it lasted for 15 days. Now, yes, there is implications on both parties. Usually after a strike, what happens is a lot of companies try to stay away from UPS. In the long term, they usually always end up coming back because other companies cannot handle the workload. When it comes down to shipping, UPS is number one. They move the most packages per day. They have the largest accounts and they also move the most of Amazon products out of any other carrier. Amazon is one of the main corporations that a lot of people tend to turn to when they need different types of goods and services, especially anybody that lives outside of a metropolitan area. So I would highly suggest if you can possibly maybe get an extra few weeks or a month's supply of your medicines, talk with your doctor, see if this is something that you can do. If your, your medicines and that type of stuff comes through UPS itself. If you depend on your deliveries coming through Amazon. If you have, say, a subscribe and ship where it comes every week, every two weeks, maybe it could be your dog food. It could be certain types of essential items that you need to survive on a daily basis. You need to really stock up on those now, enough to get you through hopefully less than two weeks. If the strike does take place, nobody can sit here and say how long it'll last. It all depends on the two sides and how they want to start negotiating back and forth to put an end to the upcoming strike. But in all fairness, what they are opposing and what they propose is to not take care of the part-time workers once again. A lot of people, you know, you think unions, they're just out there to suck money out of their members and everything else, which is not true. They are there to try to Make sure that people are being paid a fair day's pay for a fair day's work. Unlike these part-timers, a lot of people don't see them. 
You see your UPS driver on a daily basis, and most of you love them. You've known them for years. You don't see the people behind the scenes, and they're all part-time. And they're working their rear ends off in these real hot warehouses, cold warehouses in the wintertime, and everything else. They're the ones that are loading the trucks, unloading the trucks, and moving everything throughout the facilities from unloading them from a trailer into the package cars, and so on and so forth. They are the backbone of UPS. The driver goes out and delivers to all the customers. He delivers what is on his truck. The preloaders, they don't just load one truck. Some preloaders have to load three to four trucks at a time. That's a lot of work. And for them not to get a fair share, once again, in a contract would be devastating because over the last several contracts throughout the past decade or two, they have always been getting screwed left and right. So we need to merely sit back and we can think about what we need to do for ourselves, what we can do to be prepared. And that is try to stock up on those essential items that you use on a daily basis or that you get delivered on a weekly basis your medications your essential items your dog food cat food cat litter whatever it may be and try to put those up now just on a chance that august 1st rolls around and you're not going to be able to get it especially if you live in a rural area and you do not have a store anywhere close to where you live. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. This is something that is really happening, really taking place, and unless negotiations start back up, is really gonna happen. Time will tell, prepare now. I'm out.